hey, over here at the Axelson to demonstrate um, a feature that the Monarch 10 E has and it's just fantastic for uh, tapping and threading and you can't do it with uh, most all machines. So um, I'm going to do that real quick. So let's fire up this axle. So I got that American Rotary kicked on and the thing works good. I don't know, it seems like people get grumpy over phase converters, I don't know. But I can tell you that the utility uh, supply around small towns can be really bad. And uh, I've had utility three phase and run these machines and uh, I find the power I'm getting off this uh, ABX uh, American Rotary it is about the best <laughs> I've ever used. So there's there's that. But uh, I, I don't know which one's the best, but this one works darn good. It seems to have a soft start on on uh, woodworking equipment, I've noticed. Well, anyway, I'm going to fire this up and show you the feature. Okay. Getting much quieter here. Uh, the secret of lubrication is to run it reverse and it flows all that oil back there. And, uh, throw a gallon of oil at it. Okay. So, okay, we are in here. Okay, here's uh, forward. It's like if you're tapping and threading. You want to tap in. See that? Isn't that nice? And it's just like the 10 double E in uh, neutral. It engages the brake, and uh, on the 10 double E, it is a uh, dynamic brake. And uh, on this, it's a uh, multi-disc brake uh, actuated by 30 pounds of oil pressure. So we got forward, neutral, reverse. So if you're threading uh, odd leads. Uh, metric threads and you want to leave the half nuts uh, engaged, you reverse the entire machine. Okay. Hey there. When I first came across these machines in the 70s, there was uh, a huge uh, um, effort to build, uh, I think, three or four. Uh, nuclear power plants and it just turned into a terrible money waste and disaster. But regardless of that, there was a lot of work going on in machine work and um, and there was a lot of 10 double E's involved in, a, in other machinery. And uh, there was so much work that they ran these uh, 10 double E's three shifts. They just didn't shut off. And uh, I was just totally amazed by that. Um, but uh, I was kind of familiar with guitar amps and stuff. And what they did in the morning, morning or whatever, uh, day one, if they ever did shut them down for some maintenance or something, um, the uh, first thing you do when you start the machine is you flip this lever here. And the work light came on up there. That's a $600 work light. <laughs> It was listed in a, in a price list uh, some years ago by a company called Mesa Machine. I don't think they exist, but I think, I think they were sort of a broker to NASA selling these things. They put a price list out on uh, what the stuff costs. This is back in the 90s. The taper attachment was $8,000. Okay. So the disconnect switch was moved to on, you heard the fan come on, the filaments in, in the tubes are now lit up. And it's like the guitar amplifier uh, putting it on, and then it's got a second switch called standby. Now watch this, there's a tube timer, and this is gonna light up. That's after one minute. And then when you push that, you'll hear the big uh, transformer come on. And uh, 
the old musicians and stuff, and I, 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 old habits are hard to break. So you go up to your guitar amp and you turn on the mains, you, you hit this. Then you let it sit for a while, like they do here, right? And, and uh, then, you hit, then you hit it on and uh, it puts the power to, to the big tubes. So uh, when you're done using it for a while, you know, you take a break uh, in your band and you put your you you put your amplifier on standby. So right here, I'll, um, I'll hit power on, and you'll hear the big transformer. You hear that? So you use the machine now that lit up the big tubes, put the big voltage and everything in there, and it's energized. So I use the lathe, and I'm done. But I'm going to come back in an hour and use it again. Instead of shutting the machine down, you hit control off. And uh, there's no signal there. But uh, you'll know control is off because uh, you'll, you'll hit the spindle levers here and the machine won't start. Okay? So what I do is if I'm going to use this machine, and um, I try to stack the work up to it so as not to cycle it uh, going from cold start. That's kind of hard on your guitar amplifier tubes, and that's why they have standby, see? So you can, I, I do, I, I leave this, if I'm going to use it in the morning, and I might use it four hours later, I'll leave it on standby, and it doesn't hurt anything. It, it just, I haven't found that. I'm on the same set of tubes that came with this machine. I bought this machine from Lost Creek um, Machine. And that guy's a good, uh, a good dealer to, to do business with. And... Uh, <laughs> I uh, want to say that one of the things that uh, made this possible for me was uh, one of the President Bushes, I can't remember which one it was, made it so uh, business stimulus that you could lease a machine and then totally write the entire thing off on your taxes. <laughs> so. And it made it so you could lease used machines too. So I stimulated the economy by order of the President of the United States. I got a lease from, I think it was American Bank that was really handing them out easy. And uh, got this machine on a five year lease. And then it was totally <laughs> written off. And at the end of five years, it cost me one dollar. Then I had to pay sales tax on a dollar to the state of Washington. <laughs> so that's... <laughs> and not only that, not only that, that American bank ripped everybody off on the leases, and I got a check for, I don't know, 1500 bucks. <laughs> about a couple of years later. So it kind of worked out for me and the time frame was perfect too because uh, I got it about 202 and uh, I had it the lease paid for in 07 just before the nasty crash of 08. So I just skated by, you know? And uh, I saw that crash coming because rich people quit spending money on their motorcycles. Okay, so we are on standby, and uh, we're, I'm going to let it sit for a while like that. It's an old habit. It's not like uh, I like to push the button when the... <laughs> I'll let it sit there and cook for a while. Let, the, let them tubes, uh, filaments warm up just a little bit. So uh, I'll probably let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then I'll show you the startup sequence I used to help preserve the accuracy of this machine. And you should use it on your, on your more worn machine. I do on my terribly worn 
1951 manufacturing light. Okay, I will be back with that. Hey, got them uh, two filaments warmed up for uh, probably sat here 10 minutes or so. And now I'm going to hit control on again. You can hear that big transformer go back in. So now I'm going to let it sit for about uh, five, six minutes, or maybe 10 minutes. I think I'll go get a cup of coffee and I'll be back. Let's get that kind of straightened up a little bit. That may be okay like that. Okay, now replacement on this, uh, replacement cost on this machine is $150,000. So you want to uh, do everything you can to preserve the machine. So this machine is set for two months or more and not running. So all the oil is drained out of it. And I want to get oil up to it. So I'm not, I'm not going to do something uh, extremely stupid, like start this thing at 4,000 RPMs. I'm going to be careful. So what I'm going to do here, I got it in feed, and I'm going to put it into a coarse, uh, quite a coarse uh, feed here. It's in feed here, I'm going to get a pretty coarse feed going. Oh. There we go, go out to there, buddy. Okay, that's in. Let's see, make sure we're in all good stuff. We're in feed, feed. Okay, here's my speed knob right down here. I think you can see it. And I've got a dab of paint on it. I'm going to turn it all the way down there and put it right about there. Okay, all the way up 600. I don't want to start that fast. Okay, I think I'm at a good start spot. Let me get this uh, plug in there. Huh? Use that. Bear with me a minute. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to start the machine. All looks good. Yep. Okay, I'm going to start it in reverse. No, it's forward. That's okay. I'm going to start it in reverse. Kind of getting used to that axis. In the... Okay, it's running in reverse at about 500 RPM. And this has got an ingenious oil system. Now, this is a later one with a single oil window headstock, and it circulates the oil. The older ones had... Uh, uh, windows uh, at the bearing locations here, and the bearings more or less sit in oil. This one circulates it, and it doesn't have a pump. It has something more ingenious. It uses uh, the tachometer drive gears and the oil climbing up on them, and there's a little trough, and it scrapes <laughs> it scrapes the oil off, and then it goes to the bearings. And it is so simple, and it's ingenious, but. It picks up more oil running in reverse. So that's why I run the thing in reverse for a while, to pick up, to pick up the oil and get it to the bearings. And it's kind of funny, the uh, Axelson geared head lathe here is very happy running it in reverse before uh, you run it in forward. So I'll just go ahead and uh, let this thing run for, for a little bit here. Now, another thing going on here, let me take the camera loose, kind of in the way. Now notice, take notice, I have the carriage part all the way over here. And uh, I believe that's an important thing to do to uh, preserve the accuracy of the machine. Now, this uh, machine is so precision that the uh, oil has squeezed out and, and the carriage is actually run to the waist. This, this carriage like moves glass easy. And see it's hard, it's still stuck. So it's pumping oil right now, okay? And I'm gonna let it pump up and it'll take a little bit. And I can speed it up a little bit. That's why I put it in a coarse speed there. I can speed it up, still running in reverse. Running at 800 RPM. 
isn't that slick? Quiet, smooth precision. Okay. I'm going to put it in neutral. The spindle will stop in two seconds. I'll go forward. It'll go to full to 800 in two seconds. Okay. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out about this drive, it was pointed out to me and I've seen it before, is the red lathe uh, that's got a servo on it. And what happens with that machine, I want to point it out, is uh, that it slams. It reverses too hard without a soft stop. And that's bad for the machine. There. But uh, something like the axle center, or something like that, it's got that clutch. So you can go from forward to reverse and all that without jamming the gears going the other direction. Keep in mind that the gears are a thousand bucks a piece. Uh, so <laughs> the drive here has a built-in buffer and uh, it's a soft start. So if you go to reverse, it's not slamming, you know. Kind of hear the trans big transform back there. It, uh, once it warms up, the big uh, transformer uh, quiets down. And the big transformer in this one is a little bit more noisy than uh, others I've seen, but uh, it works, so I haven't messed with it. Okay. In that slick, it's in there pumping oil. And it should be pumped up enough that it can start moving it. Now, I'm not quite all the way over here. Notice I lose about two inches or more with the Travigol. Okay, now I'm going to start moving this a little bit. See, it's moving now. See, it's getting oil under it. The oil pump's lifting it up. And uh, I always... Uh, get this out of the way here I always uh, run, run the cross feed and the longitudinal feed a little bit and that gets the, the oil climbing up on those clutches we want those clutches working smooth we want everything working smooth in this we really do okay so that's doing that Okay, I'm gonna put this on the camera and uh, on, on the tripod here. I'm I'm really excited. Every time I, I turn this machine on, it's like an event. Okay. <laughs>